Good morning and happy Bank Holiday Monday. I hope you're enjoying the weather. I hope you're enjoying your Easter break. We're going to carry on with our devotions. We're going to pick it up from Luke chapter 24 and we're going to read from verse 33. The Bible says this, they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. So this is after the road to Emmaus where they had been talking with Jesus and didn't know who he was and he revealed himself to them and he sends them back to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them, so to the rest of them, and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking that they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see, I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. We're going to look this morning at the little phrase that Jesus says to them, peace be with you. Now, these disciples had been through so much in just a few short days. Uh, Everything that was designed to draw strength and peace from them Obviously, they had been there during the Hosanna stage and the celebration, but very quickly after that, they had been through the ordeal of seeing Jesus arrested and then tried an unfair trial. They'd seen him then prosecuted and uh, sentenced to death. They heard in their own voices their rejection of him, their denial of him. Possibly they'd watched him as he carried his cross uh, up to Calvary and then when they nailed him so brutally to the cross. Every possible emotion designed to create fear, designed to create distress, was happening to them. Every sense of peace would have gone out of the window. These were disciples that had felt every single emotion possible. And now they were trying to come to terms with what was left of their lives They were beginning to hear rumours that Jesus was alive, but they were still trying to work all that out. The promises that he'd made must seem right far back in the recesses of their mind. And here we have Jesus and he reveals himself to them and he says to them, peace be with you. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? What we can think peace is often is the, the absence of war. We're all praying for the situation in Ukraine at the moment. When we talk about peace, what we're talking about is the, the absence of war. We want war to finish. We want there to be peace. But we're not naive to think that that, that kind of peace will bring about all senses of peace. If people then don't go back to a peaceful life, there's, there's all sorts of trauma and tragedy that they have to cope with. When we think about peace, we can often think about it being the absence of tragedy or the absence of grief or everybody happy all the time or the absence of disagreement, everybody all agreeing all the time. But we know that in reality that that isn't the case. That's not the world that we live in. We know that when Ukraine and the situation in Ukraine is solved, that there'll be something else. Our world is always at war. And even God talks about there being rumours, wars and rumours of wars. So what is this peace that Jesus is talking about? It's interesting that he actually speaks to them about peace once he is standing there right with them. Peace be with you, he says, as he shows them his hands and his feet. We think about and we think about the cross and we think about the resurrection of Jesus. And we need to understand peace in the context of that. That peace is all about Jesus. It's all about him and his presence with us. In John 16, 33, the Bible says this. This is one of the promises that we don't like to hang on to, but it's there. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, this is it, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Peace is found only in the person of Jesus. That's why people can face all sorts of things, all sorts of really difficult circumstances and still have settled peace in the presence 
of Jesus. Jesus, peace is the person. Peace is Jesus and it cannot be found in fullness outside of him. I read an article uh, just today about a pastor who is on the front line in Ukraine and he is now managing a battalion of soldiers that have never ever experienced war before. And somebody was asking him, how do you cope? How do you cope with this new line of work? He says, well, this is my church. This is my new church. And so the reporter from CNN was saying, well, how do you cope? He says, I, the only way I can cope is because of my faith in Jesus. He said, if I listened to all the shelling around, if I listened to all the rumours, if I listened to all the circumstances and the tragedies and the stories, every ounce of peace would drain from me and I would be in despair. He said, but I hold on to Jesus. He says, and I'm training my men to hold on to Jesus. Jesus is my peace. Jesus is your peace. And when we have him with us by our side, my goodness, the best place to be. So today I want to pray the peace of Jesus, the peace of the presence of Jesus over your life and over your circumstances. Father, I thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you for the peace that teaches us to overcome, the peace that teaches us to take heart, that kind of peace that can only be found in you, Jesus. The whole world can be in conflict, the whole world can be under pressure, the whole world can be broken, and yet we can find peace in you. Teach us to walk in your peace, teach us to draw close to you where our peace is found. And teach us to demonstrate that and live that so that other people can also find the peace of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a great day. Bye.